for a, a really fun class. Um, it is recorded and there will be a replay, but this is one where if you want to try and make one, it's a pretty quick project and we can probably um, repeat it a couple times. So I think that's possible for this class. And um, the project itself has a lot of different variations and spins. The main one, and the first one I came up with was a really cool earring. And this is just has so much style and it's not um, as easy to show on the camera as it is in person. There's some sparkle to it. And you can just see these just on a bar in your, you know, your gallery or your, uh, your display. They're just very eye-catching. And then on, they are very cute. And they're just really just they're so now and they're so summer so that's the one we're going to go step by step through making this and then we'll talk a little bit about variations and places you can take the idea um and the basis of the idea is all making these links these little bugle chain links so you can make really elaborate jewelry you can make simple beaded chain and because they're bugles this works up really quickly so it's a nice way to get started with some jewelry that doesn't take forever and you can make lots of single link chain and a bracelet. So we'll talk about all of the materials and how to do these. Um, and I switch to my, um, my mat here. And so what's shown here are the designs I was just holding up. Some really special statement earrings and the, uh, the smaller bracelet. There's different versions of a fringe. You can go long or short. And there's the chain for that little necklace. And this, um, we won't be covering this in class today, but I just want to do a shout out to it. I learned to make this by watching Stephanie Moore's class for UV Resin Craft. And I made that. I made that with the mold and just resin and super cute pendant for summer. So that's something to take your jewelry to like any place to think about checking out. And then um, I'm going to switch over to materials really quick. So let me just. Uh, Gently move these guys over here. So the basis of all these designs is making these little links. And they're quick and they're easy and they're fun. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to get the measurements right. And we'll cover that first. But they're made with these beautiful beagle beads. And we have about a dozen colors. My favorites are here on the mat, but um, there are so many. Uh, earlier before um, we were talking about how you could change up the colors to make a really sophisticated design. If you got the, there's some silver bugles, you could put those on gold. So just lots of cool ideas there. And what you'll need in the way of materials, just starting with, with the most basic item, is some 22 gauge wire. And um, this is what I'm using. It is the German style. So it's that medium temper, you know, it's kind of half hard but not, um, not unmalleable. So we'll be able to work with it really easily. And then the main tool that I'm using is what's called a bale making plier or a bale forming plier. And I know there's a lot of different versions out there and the measurements tend to be generally the same, but I'm gonna talk through how to test your tool and figure out the measurement for your tool. We'll also need some chain nose pliers, bent nose pliers, Flush cutters, for sure, you'll need flush cutters. This is for the jump rings here. And so for jump rings, I'm using these six millimeter jump rings. And by all means, if you would like to change your color, um, you can change the gold, silver. I'm working with the antique oxidized brass color today. For ear wires, um, any Pishuk ear, ear wires will do. Something like that would be great. Uh, findings packs. Lots of options there. You can get findings from, I think this is the one I added to the handout. But yeah, there's just lots of sources of, of findings on the Michaels wall. Those big earrings that I showed earlier, the really statement ones. I used a finding that I got on the, uh, the creations connector. So this was the one that was on the top there. And you would need two of them because if you're gonna make an earring, you would need to pull those off and then just save this for a future project. We'll use those for something. And that's it for materials. I think I caught, I covered all of them. And so I'm just going to jump into, oh, um, another incidental item you might need. You'll need a tape measure. If you have a tape measure or a ruler handy, that'll help you out a lot. 
Okay, and so um, also wanted to mention if you if you're not using the bale farming pliers, you can use round nose, and round nose will be fine. It might help if you're wanting these loops to look like they're the same size. If you take a sharpie and just draw a little line on your round nose pliers to mark the point where you're going to repeatedly make loops that will help you get some consistency there. Um, so that will work fine too. I'm going to be working with these and I'm going to be working on the smallest round. That's this one here. Okay and so so what I did so um in the chat you guys will see an updated handout that has a measurements that work for me and I, I'm always kind of wary about getting measurements because not everybody's tool is going to yield the same result. Um, but what I found is there's a way you could kind of back into the measurement and test it with your own tool. So I'm going to show you how to do that really quick. So go ahead and just cut just kind of like a good working length. The uh, handout originally said five inches, and that's more than enough. You'll get two links out of that most likely. And that's working with the four bugle height design. But so there's my five inches. And so I, I be, be really uh, kind of uh, precise with that. Make sure you've got a good count. So I, I did go a little over five. And if you have any of those like nylon jaw, feel free to straighten it. I didn't include those in the parts list, so I'm gonna work without one tonight. But it looks like I went to, it looks like I went to five and a half. And so how these loops are made, and I, um, I wanna talk for just a second about what these are. So these aren't your traditional simple loops. They're more like, um, if you've ever seen split rings, they're made kind of like that. They don't open, unfortunately, but they are a little bit more secure than a simple loop. And I like them because um, when you're forming a, a regular simple loop, you have there's a spot where you have to hold forward that wire before you bring it back. And in that step, occasionally I was breaking my bugle beads. And so it led me to think, well, maybe they're a different way. And then of course the wrap loops, wrap loops are great. Wrap loops will work nicely. I think that's what I did just experimentally on this one. I did it with 24 gauge, but um, I wanted to teach something different. There's a lot of already very great wrapped loop tutorials out there, but I haven't seen anyone teach this. So I thought, well, let's, let's teach this one. And um, that way it's just another, another thing in your toolbox that you've got to work with when you're designing. So how these are made is you'll take the end of your wire and just put it inside your tool. I do this thing where I kind of feel the top of the tool to see if I've flush, you know, that there's not any sticking up over here. And so that seems pretty good. And I'm just going to roll it away from me. I'm going to go around two times. And at this point here, where the wire starts to cross itself, just bring it up above the coil. And right here, go ahead and push that tail down with your tool. And just keep going around and stop when you see that end of the wire appear. And it's going to connect here with this long, with the main strand of wire. So that gave me my loop. And now I'm going to measure what do I have left here? And that way I know how much I need up here to make my loops with my tool. So I had five and a half before. I'm just gonna feel this out and see where I'm at. I'm just a hair under, let's see, a quarter there. So I need three quarters of an inch to make my loops. So that's what my, my tool is telling me. So test that for yours and see what you get. Um, conveniently for me, the three quarter is really serendipitous with the measure and height of a bugle bead. And the bugle bead ends up being roughly a quarter of an inch. So all the math was really pretty for the handout, the, um, the update that shows how much to cut for this and how much to cut for that. And just grab my notes really here to make sure I got it. If you're doing a link, that has just one bugle bead. Um, for me, for my tool, I needed to cut 1.75 inches. And this is the tool I'm using. And for the links that have two bugle beads, you'll want two inches. 
And for the links that have four, go ahead and cut two and a half inches for that. And that's all assuming that your coils are three quarters of an inch. If they're different, just add or subtract based on um, what you got for that last measurement. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create for the earrings. So the earring design, the original version, started with the red bugle beads. These are called ruby. And then it had two links of four above it. And this um, length of wire that I've cut here is plenty to give me two of these. So I'm gonna make these first. And you can also kind of like factory make these. If you know you're gonna make a bunch of earrings, you can just do a bunch of links like that, set them aside, do a bunch like that, and then come and assemble later. So just lots of different ways you can, you can speed up this process. I'm gonna grab one more color. I realized I didn't lay out the amethyst That's in this design. Okay. And it doesn't matter which order you put it in because the top and the bottom will be the same. And when you assemble it, you can just lay it out in the, the order that you'd like it to be in. Okay, and so remembering for me that my coils need three quarters of an inch, I'm gonna cut three quarters of an inch up here. Bring this out. I need to cut it about right there. Flush cutters. And so the width of flush cutters, they have like an indentation on the top and then they're flat on the back. Go ahead and make it so that the flat side is facing your piece. And the reason I do that is so that I've got um, a flat edge and not a triangular shaped edge. So how that's gonna look when I cut is this side's gonna be flat, but on this side, I've got kind of a triangle. I know it's hard to see, but I'll come along later and flatten that when I use this piece. I'll set that aside for now. So with the this part, the coil part, pointed away from me, and th this is so that both of my coils are facing the same direction that's just design. If you don't like it, if you want to face a different direction, have one going this way and one going that way, you can do that too. The only reason I did it facing the same direction is I thought it maybe made them sit in a straight line more. But you can see here at the bottom, I didn't do that. I made one the other way and it still looks really nice. So that's preference, whatever you like to do there. I find myself putting that loop facing that direction because I'm going to roll forward from here. So getting my tool back. I'm just gonna roll it. Keep going. And what you should see is um, that little end connecting with this wire, kind of just lining up there when you reach your top of your bugle. So just kind of flush like that. And there's one link. So I'll make another one just like it. And I remember this end wasn't my flush end. So I'm just going to very, very minutely trim that. And it'll still work. If you forget that step, don't sweat that. That's just me being very perfectionist. It's not essential. Just coming around. And here it is. You see that? And it's blush. And I'm just going to string a few more. This is the four design. Okay, so loop facing away from me in that direction. And I'm just going to roll that. Oh, I forgot to measure, making sure that this is a quarter inch. It should be pretty close. It might be a little over because I cut more than five inches. Let's see where that's at. Here's my quarter inch mark. I need to trim about that much off. Okay. And 
And so this is just easier for me, I feel like with bugles and with any kind of delicate stone, like a crystal, for example, or if you're working with like a quartz, it will help you not break the stone when you're doing your wraps. Um, as careful as I try to be when I'm making wraps, I don't always get it right. And I sometimes break my stones. And bugle beads are, they're glass and will kind of behave like a stone in a way. So I was facing the same direction there. What I was doing there was just straightening it out because I spun a little bit when I was making it. And there you go. So two links. And for this design, I just want to repeat what I did. Make another two of these and then two more of these and we'll put a we'll put our earring together. You see how fast these are to make really quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut five inches now because I know that I can get two links out of that. start with my flush end here. Hey, Danielle, it's Carmi. Hey. Um, just a quick, I don't know if you happen to have it, because the, um, the bale forming tool is really great. Would you mind demoing it if people just have a regular plier? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I'll just need to perform that measurement that I did in the begin beginning again for my tool. But I do have a pair handy right here. What I don't have handy is a Sharpie, but let's just, uh, let's use like, let's see. Um, I'm gonna come down to, you know, maybe like right here on my pliers. So on my on my tool, because the um, round those pliers get bigger, the further up the tool you go, the further up the tool you work, which is great because they're more, um, they're more versatile. They can do more things. Um, but their only downfall is consistency. You have to kind of remember where you made your loop the first time. And I struggle with that personally, so that's why I really love these. But these are, um, they're kind of an unusual finding, or sorry, an unusual tool. But what I'm going to do is that same little step that we did before. I'm going to take and measure kind of just a standard amount. Let's measure... I'm just gonna do two and a half here. And the pliers are here. Cutting that at two and a half. And now I'm just gonna form a loop. And I'm eyeballing it to kind of see like what looks a little bit close to my three quarters of an inch mark. And these are the sparkle round nose that are available at Michael's that I'm using right now. So coming around and seeing, seeing that little tail there. I don't know if that's visible, but. So there's my loop. And I know I had two and a half before, so let's measure it again and see what we get. It's a hair less than two, it's like, like here. So I wish it was better math, but it's looking like if I use that same spot, I need a little less than three quarters of an inch. So like a, like a hair less. Um, that's so in the noise that I feel like I'll just make it kind of a short three quarters of an inch and, and that's how I'll work it. So let's see if it works. Let's put on four of our beads here. And I'm going to measure again and see what I ended up with as far as if I need to trim or not. So it's three quarters of an inch. This is going to be just a little bit tall. I could trim off like two ticks here and it might be perfect. So why don't I do that? Just since I know it. And trying to remember kind of where I was. Here's my loop, it's facing forward. I think I was just kind of, we're kind of right about there on the tool. I think it's a lot better if you mark your tool. It's gonna to be close. 
So it went over just a bit for me. Let's see how it's kind of hanging over. So a couple things you could do. One is it looks great. You could just ignore it or you could trim it. Um, and trimming it, just be careful you don't cut the coil underneath and cut with the flush side facing, facing the bugle bead. So let me try to trim that down just a little bit. I'm always afraid I'm going to cut my other coils, but it looks like I made it. And there we go. So that worked out too. I'm going to turn them so they face the same direction there. And so there's that's pretty consistent. And I think I managed to make my loops almost the same. It looks like I made my top one a little smaller than my bottom one. So I'm looking around to see if I have a pen handy, but it would be cool if I marked this. So definitely, yeah, you definitely want to just draw a little line because as much as you try to remember, it's always going to be just a hair off. But I'm going to keep practicing. We'll use the round nose again. So this is the one I made earlier. I'm just stringing on him right here. Where is that? What did we say that was? It was it was three quarter of an inch minus a little bit. So right about there. Oops. Okay, there we go. And that's facing away from me. I'm just gonna start rolling it. I must have not measured that right. What did I do, guys? <laughs> Danielle, I was watching and I think you gave yourself an inch. I did, didn't I? <laughs> we were, I was joking earlier with everyone that I would tie my Velcro shoes wrong if the camera's on me. You guys gotta watch me because I. I think I think about so many different things that I don't always, oh, there's just, you know, there's so much going on that you're like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do what I did before because this is a really pretty loop. I'm just gonna trim it. So you can always save these, you just might waste a little bit of wire, but that's okay. So I'm gonna trim off these two here. And there we go saved it. But one's going one direction, one's going the other. So let's just fix that really quick. Fix that. And it's facing this way. So I want to go. I'm using some bent nose and some square square chain nose to do this. And that's pretty. And it still looks great. So Super forgiving technique. Didn't break any bugles. <laughs> and there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna make um, I'm gonna make two small ones for the bottom of our earring, and then we'll put it all together. So let's just do that really quick. I'm gonna use the left here. Danielle, your friends mm -hmm. in the sidebar always appreciate when you make a mistake. <laughs> Thank um, goodness. Not to spite you, <laughs> but because they learn from how you fix it, which is really great because no doubt when you're not with us, we might have these little issues. And so it's nice to have seen you do a repair and save it. Well, that's a, that's good to know. Yeah. Cause you know, we're always like, we're always scared. Oh no, I made a mistake and I'm supposed to be showing the right way to do it. Not the wrong way. But all these little kind of bloopers, they all happen when we're working at home. We just, you know, we just kind of breeze past it. Let's see what my dimensions are there. That's looking like it's going to be too long. Let me cut it right about there. And then wires here.
Danielle, someone just mentioned in the sidebar that they, they're, they're usually not good at making loops. So this is a much better technique. Oh, that's great. That's great to hear. Yeah, I, I struggle with getting my simple loops right too. Um, originally, I saved this because this was one of my prototypes from when I was designing this for this class. And so I, you guys will recognize these as just a basic simple loop. Look how inconsistent they are. I, my thought as I made these was, I am the last person to try to teach this. Because <laughs> they're just, I mean, these were okay. These ones came out all right. But look at this one. It's just, that one's really tiny. And that one's, and I did that because I wasn't sure how much to fold over. And on a simple loop, if you're using a tool like this and going for about there, a quarter inch is typically going to be great. But um, not shown here are the two bugles that I broke when I was folding that piece over to do that that spin. So that's just something to think about. And then of course the these regular ones, uh, these are called like a regular wrap loop. If you like this look and you want to do this, go down to 24 gauge. Uh, that worked out a lot better for me. And that just kind of makes it more dainty too. So so many ideas that, that you guys can try. I need three more of these, but before I do that, I'm thinking let's put together an earring just in case, you know, we, we feel like we've got that covered. So I'm gonna get out my, um, first I'm gonna get these jump rings out. And I'm gonna need one here, and one here, and then at the top, there'll be an ear wire. I'm gonna grab that really quick too. So much pile of findings next to me. These bags are cool because they're resealable. The ones that come in the packs, I really dig that. See, you can just, it helps me a lot. And so that's all we're gonna do here. And so to do that, I'm gonna use some square nose, chain nose pliers, and then these bent nose ones. And you can always just use regular chain nose. That will work totally fine. And so with a jump ring, Jump rings are formed in a, in a nice circle. Sometimes they're just a smidge open when you get them out of the packs. Um, but what we're gonna do is open it in a lateral motion so that you preserve the circular shape of the jump ring. So you never wanna just pull it apart. You just wanna kind of, we're gonna move the tool that way. So it opens like that. So it's still a circle shape, but now we can get it through things. So there's one. And then I'm just gonna close it back up in the same way. Make sure I have a good grip on it there. And so that should connect really nicely. I'm just gonna do that one more time. So there's that lateral motion to open that jump ring. And it's not super important that if you're if you're wanting to, you can put the loops facing the same direction. It'll still look great even if you don't, but I've been trying to do that on mine if it if I think of it in the moment. I'm just closing it. So there's our earring. And I'm gonna switch to some regular chain nose. You could do this with any of these tools, but um, it's kind of a preference because I, I wanna open this ear wire with some precision. Here's the ear wire and I've pinched the part. I've looked for the seam there's a seam right there. I'm just going to really gently open it. And even though these are very small gauge, the wire is tempered harder. So it's strong. It's, it's a lot stronger than the wire we've been playing with. That's that same lateral motion that we used for the jump rings. I'm just going to bring that back and close it up. And so there's our earring. And of course, any colors that, that you'd like to use would be perfect for this design. 
but that's it in a nutshell. Um, and we're doing so great for time. Well, does anyone have questions or something else they want to see a spin on this design? I could try to make some of the shorter links and show that. I think you're good, Danielle. Everyone's quite pleased with your loop idea and measuring. Oh, yay. Um, haven't heard from anybody else in the sidebar, but I think most of us um, have not been measuring and we will going forward. And again, um, people are cluing in very quickly. Obviously, multiple strands are going to look beautiful. Yeah, and that was where I took it next was, I just kind of thought we'll make a bunch. So this is the same thing we just did, but five times. And then I just attached it all together and put it on one of those little findings, the, um, those connector findings. And any connector finding will work. It doesn't have to be this one. I just like that one. But yeah, those same style. And then uh, up here at the top, in the place where we did the, the place where we did the ear wire before, I did use more jump rings to put this piece to that piece. And uh, let's see, any more tips? If you were going to make this one, you'd want to start from the middle so that you have room to maneuver and then work out from there and adding each one. That'll make it just a little easier to get your, to get your fringe on there. And let's see, so something that might be cool to cover since we're doing so great on time. And this one, um, it's hot off the presses. I mean, I made it yesterday. It was just something I wanted to see. You know how you get an idea and you're like, oh, I hope I get time, I wanna try that. This is a bunch of those put together. And the only tricky part of it, um, well, other than making a bunch of these, is when it's put together, you do have to put four onto a jump ring. And so it can be a little tricky to get that jump ring closed once you've got all those links piled on top of each other like that. You could go up to an eight millimeter jump ring if you wanted, that might solve it. I made it work with the six, but I had to really, um, you know, I had to really work carefully. But how cool does that look? It almost looks like one of those, you know, we used to make paperclip jewelry back in the day. It kind of made me reminiscent of that. And then at the end, I just made jump rings in a clasp and that was it. Danielle, that one looks like stained glass. Yeah, yeah, I like the colors and I tried to get, um, my dream was to get the red on there too, but uh, it would have been a little, a little bit too big for me to wear it. So, but I could have put just one of each color and then so I, I might do this again and play with that so I can get all the colors on it. Danielle, because, because you have time and that component is really finicky, I would love to see you make a tiny one. One of these like links? Yeah, we have, yeah. We have time for that. I just need to make three more of those and we've got it. And so um, I'm gonna switch over to 1.75. That's my measurement for a single bugle. So that's how much I want to cut. And oh, I have another trick to show you guys. Um, and I have to give a shout out to an old friend, my friend Amy, who taught me how to bead. She taught me how to wire up. She taught me a trick that if you're ever like just factory making a bunch of links like this that we're about to do, you cut your first one, you measure it. And I said 1.75, right? I was about to cut that at one and a half. I need that to be 1.75. And so let's see. Blush cutters. So now I need to cut uh, three more, right? Well, three total, because I've got one already. I need four. Use it to measure. So this is the tip that Amy taught me. Instead of having to tape measure it every time, just come on. and use it to measure itself. So now I've got my, my layout ready. And just for the sake of speed, I'm gonna switch back to this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip the end and roll it forward. Let's make a really quick loop here. Oops. I've been passing the end above. I think it would still work even if you didn't, but it just, um, just the way I've been doing it. I think it makes it easier to see when it has made its full second rotation. There's one. Do a bugle lead on there. 
And so this should measure three quarters of an inch. And it approximately does. And my tool is here. It's a little bigger. Um, I should have trimmed that. But I think it works anyway. So that one's good. I gotta trim these, this next one down. Actually, I'm gonna do that factory right here. It's gonna make it a little shorter. There we go. If you're not wearing safety glasses, um, don't do what I just did. Just put your hand over it when you cut. Okay. Danielle, I think a few of us were telling you earlier this week, I've had those bale forming pliers in my bag for a long, long time, and I've never used them. So this is great that you're showing us how to use them. Yeah, they're, um, they were a late discover discovery for me as well. I didn't come across them until there was something I was trying to do. I think I was trying to make a finding component that I saw. Um, Sarah um, Lovecraft do. She was making a clover and I loved that clover and I did not own these pliers at that time and that is when I acquired them. <laughs> I think I, I had another pair but they were just too big and so I went and got, I went and got these. All right and for some reason this one doesn't look it's like a triangle shape somewhere. Let's trim that down a little bit. There we go. That one worked out pretty good. And I did something here. It's on the tool still, and this one was kind of pointing that way. I just straightened it with my hand. And that worked out. So let's put that together. We're going to create this little connection right here. So I just need a jump ring and bear with me here. I'm going to have to, I'm going to, um, I guess, fumble through it a little bit, but I'm just going to do my best. I, it took me a while to figure out and get a system that worked for this one. This just started as a sketch and I didn't know if it was going to work, but I ended up being kind of determined. Um, and what I also did, and this is also completely optional, but I offset their, the direction they're facing. So one of them, the loops are facing down and on the other side, that same loop, the loop is facing up. And I stayed consistent with that on both sides to give it that dimension. So that's just something you can play with. So here my loop is facing down. And I think I wanna make that loop facing up. And so now I wanna do the same thing with the ones that are gonna be facing over here. So I want loops facing down. And loops facing up. Now I gotta try to close all of these. There we go. And I like that. I think I got a good close on it. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's working there. So I'm gonna put a jump ring here and here so you can see how it leaves. I'm actually give you a better view. This helps. It's hard to see, but um, it worked. So here's another jump ring or two more jump rings. I'm just going to connect those. And if this is a bracelet, a full length bracelet, and I was ready to add my clasp, let's put a clasp over here. Let me find my finding for that.
So there's the lobster claw. Hopefully going on there. Hmm. And somehow it looks like I flipped it so that they're both facing me. But that's also a cool look. I did something a little different there. I'm not sure how I did it, but I um, made them also a little different. But yeah, you can play with that and see you know, what you come up with and, and how you like it. It does look like stained glass to me. It's, and then this light isn't doing justice to the sparkle that these beads have. You can just see them just... My thought for this for summer was just to have an entire bar of these just hanging out um, so my shoppers can come see the possibilities there. And another thing I thought of, and I didn't, um, I didn't have time to go find something, but I'm sure that at Michael's they have something like this. A little tiny like rhinestone charm at the bottom would be really cute, or any kind of charm. Really. Just there's so many things you could do with this design. It's just so neat. So I'm, I'm hoping that was inspiring. Um, is there any questions or anything else you guys would like to see? We could explore some of the other loops if someone's ever struggled with with those and they wanna wanna ask me about them. Danielle, Raina likes your resin jewelry charm. <laughs> oh, thanks, Raina. Yeah, I've gotten I've gotten the resin bag, you guys. I'm not gonna lie. I have been playing with resin a lot. And uh, it's just so fun. And in my little my little boy, my youngest, um, he's turning six tomorrow. He loves resin. And he made a heart, a blue heart with all these like sparkles in it. And his favorite color is purple. We um we tried to make purple, but he put a lot of blue in, so it stayed blue. But um yeah, those dyes they like, they go a long way. Like a tiny drop will turn like an entire cup of resin into like the most opaque color. But he gets so excited when we turn the lamp on, and we start. Yeah, he's like yay, he claps. <laughs> but it, it um. You know, it's so it's instant. What's the word? I'm I'm borrowing this from um, Sarah, but it's an instant gratification because this is done so quickly. You don't have to, to make two smaller versions for matching earrings now. Oh yeah, yeah. I did. I made some earrings. I don't have them up here with me, but I did make some some really cute sparkly earrings too. And I made a seed bead earring. Um, I took a bunch of seed beads and dumped them in the mold. So you put the put the resin in first, then you dump some seed beads on top. And then you put another layer of resin on top of that. So you'd have to cure it once, seed beads, cure it again. And it's this like seed beaded tube with all of our sparkly seed beads inside. Danielle, somebody asked, um, and it's a great question. Um, would you have ever done this if you just started with eye pins that already had one end complete? Sure, why not? Yeah, I mean, that would save you doing one of your loops. Um, your top loop might look different if you're doing the rolled loop, um, but um, I didn't want to uh, deter anyone from trying that other loop style because you can make it work. You see it, it worked out for me here, but that's the same kind of loop that's on an eye pin. And it was, um, three, let's see, we've got time. Let me just show it really quick. So I'm gonna make an eye pin and pretend it's an eye pin. That would be great. See and this tool is also great for making eye pins because you can just. All right, I'm going to flatten that. So it's kind of a big eye pin, but generally speaking, it's it's in in the realm of being an eye pin. I've noticed they tend to be a little bit smaller than that, but that's going to work. Let's put some gables on it. Everybody cross your fingers so that I don't break my top bugle. Okay, so there's four. And the tricky part here, and maybe there's a different way to do the loops. The way I was taught and the way I always do them is I kind of put my fingernail above my last bead and bend the wire. And so you want to bend it down. And um, it's past 90 degrees. It's you don't want to go too close because you need to be able to get your tool under it. 
but now you want to trim that to a quarter inch. And so it always feels like I'm cutting too much and I always get a little scared, but it's like right there. These loops for me, they were the hardest to master. I did wrap loops first and these always intimidated me because I always got them wrong. So there's about a quarter inch, fold it over. It's above our last bugle bead and I didn't break the bugle bead. Yay. Okay, I'm just gonna try to roll this forward. And that worked. I need to straighten it out. It's not flat. And then I grab this other one here. Yeah, you could do that. And this has one feature that the other wraps that I just showed don't have is you can open and close this to add basically to link it to itself. So now you don't need jump rings anymore. Um, you just take along chain those pliers. And there's that lateral motion to open it. And you can just hook them, hook them all together like that. So that's definitely an option. Um, there's so many great tutorials out there already for how to do that. That was why I kind of thought, well, let's just do something different, something bulkier. But this is a great option too. I appreciate that, Danielle. You've given us so many great ideas. I think um, for myself, the security of the two loops makes me feel a lot better. Um, someone pointed out sometimes when you just have one loop, the bugle falls into it. So your style tonight um, will definitely keep the bugles where they need to be. Hey, well, I'm glad you guys liked it. It's, um, yeah, just something different, something else to play with and, and think about um, when you're creating your jewelry at home. I'm going to bring out um, our next classes. Next. Um, Let's see. Yeah, next week is the herringbone class. And so this is, um, we're going back to bead weaving. We're gonna bring back our thread and then we're gonna bring out a mix. The mix that I've used here, I know it was hard to find. So I wanted to just quickly talk about our mixes really quick. Um, Michael's, you could always just buy four different color tubes but if you wanted to use a mix. The one I used is this one. And it is called Purple Passion. Um, and it's really popular. So if you can't find that one, my next favorite is Deep Sea and Apricot. Actually, I don't have Apricot up here. This is, this one is Royal Topaz. And this one is called Retro Blue. It always looks a little bit more green than blue to me. But each of these has four colors in it and you could use them to color block in this stitch. And it's a really easy, friendly beginner stitch that will introduce, um, round herringbone and it opens up lots of possibilities for us to try new things um, in some future classes like stacking different size beads. I'll talk about this in class next week. We may not have time to show it but you'll totally get it when you see this how this is made how that works. Um, you know there's so much to expand on from that there's so many things you can do. Um, and then week after that uh, some crochet. Now these are size six seed beads. And I did this on Belon. You can use knotting cord, Belon, lots of different things will work. I'll be using Belon next week to make this really cool chain. It's just a regular crochet chain stitch. And we'll have fun with that. And then this is gonna be really fun. We're just gonna go, uh, the last class in June is making really fun super duo cuffs. These are statement, but they're super um, you know, easy and fast. So they don't take very long for a statement piece. And they're very cute. So I think I'm excited about this one. We're going to have lots of fun for that class. Yeah, and so that's all I've got for today. Um, I'm excited for next week to do our herringbone stitch next week. And um, yeah, and so uh, if you got no forgets, oh, here I am. <laughs> you guys can see me. I want to say thank you so much for being here on your Friday night with us and getting to be with friends. It's something I, I really look forward to every week. And I'm wishing you a great weekend. And I hope to see you guys next week on Friday. Bye, have a great weekend.